Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look in detail at this upcoming week's potentially very cold and wintry weather. It does look like we'll be seeing some very cold air masses come over the top of the UK with the risk of snow for quite a few. Now I'm not expecting anything too major of course as it is end of March early April but it does look likely we'll be seeing falling snow for quite a few, even to low-lying areas. And of course, if the timings coincide together and we see right intensities, we could even be seeing some accumulations, which could even be significant in the north and over hills. So have a look at the various models, um, looking at both the pressure charts, the the upper air temperatures and the precipitation as well over the coming days. Still a little bit of uncertainty around with exact positioning um, of any low pressure systems, little convergence zones that could decide where we see the heaviest precipitation. But it's looking likely now all areas will be going very, very cold this coming week. So remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So we do start by having a look at the live radar. Uh, we'll have a look at this for a little bit because nothing really is going on at the moment. We do still have high pressure over the top of the UK. But with more of an easterly flow as the high pressure moves towards Greenland and Iceland, it does mean that... Um, with the easterly flow, it is a little bit chillier today, especially further eastwards, and we're dragging in a bit of a lower cloud as well. Some areas in the east will be quite cloudy today. Further westwards, though, it will be uh, a little bit better, and that's why we're going to see the highest temperatures as well. But if we do move, look further northwards, you can see all this snow and rain uh, up towards Norway, Sweden, even towards Iceland, and out here... It, out in the Norwegian Sea is a low pressure system which is going to be plunging southwards bringing that colder air on its uh, nor, uh, on its lead, uh, on its back edge towards the UK as it plunges through Norway through the North Sea and as it does that's of course where we're seeing this real cold air so that's the low pressure system we're keeping an eye on as it does move southwards bringing all this precipitation and cold air with it so we first do have a look at the UK Met Office run. We'll first have a look at precipitation and then we'll have a look at temperature and then we'll have a look at the various mid-range models as well, see what they're showing. So we do have a look uh, at the uh, current cloud and precipitation. You can see just a bit of cloud really in the east today and, for, and drifting further westwards throughout the day, but nothing too major. Some areas still quite pleasant with mid-teens possible. Few showers potentially cropping up throughout the hours of tomorrow within the thicker cloud. And we can see tomorrow, again, more showers potentially popping up. And in the south, we see a little bit of um, heavier precipitation potentially moving up. And that could bring a little bit of a soaking there to central southern England as things generally start to go a little bit more unsettled. But you can see this band of cloud, and that's the boundary uh, towards the cold air. And you can see snow starts to move in. And along these weather fronts that are with, associated with that low pressure system, you see mixing of rain, sleet, and snow. As it progresses southwards, precipitation for many through Wednesday. Um, and it could be wintry of nature, especially um, over higher ground, but not exclusively as that moves through. And then we just go into a widespread wintry shower regime, especially further northwards and eastwards with that wind coming in from the northeasterly direction. And it even potentially to low-lying areas such as central southern England could see some falling snow. As I said, not expecting anything major, but falling snow is pretty likely for many along the eastern side of the country. But even further westwards and towards central southern areas, it's not out of the question at all, especially when we get a system like this, small little localised system that crops up, that also peps up those showers a little bit. And moving beyond that, we continue with this cold northeasterly flow. And the reason why is if you look at the upper, uh, sorry, the pressure charts, you can see northeasterly flow. And by the moment, maybe Friday, it starts to slacken a bit and reducing those showers. But you can see through Thursday, real tight isobars, and that's where we're going to see the heaviest showers. Now, if we do run it back, actually, and have a look at the 850 HPA temperatures, you can see by early hours of Tuesday, that very cold air is just to our northeast, and it progresses southwards, plunging the whole country bitterly cold, down to minus 9, minus 10 degrees at 850 HPA, and that remains all the way until Friday and into the weekend. But high pressure will be toppling, so perhaps cutting off the wintry risk, but turning things more frosty and even colder, perhaps, overnight. And another thing to look at is the dew points widely below freezing, meaning any precipitation falling out of the sky has the potential to be wintry of nature.
Now, one thing we'll have a look at now is the max temperatures, which are going to be very much up and down. And I'll explain why there could be some very low, or locally very low temperatures, um, sort of two or three degrees, and sort of 20 miles away could be seven or eight degrees. So we do run it through. You can see today, this afternoon, 16, 17 degrees in the far west, much colder for every but only mid, uh, sort of high single digits, low teens potentially along the east coast. For the early hours of tomorrow morning, cold for some um other areas more cloud around holding above uh freezing holding up uh, holding her above well above low single digits and you see by monday afternoon 16 17 18 degrees in a few spots but as said as we head through monday evening cold air starts to sink southwards through tuesday afternoon you can see widely low single digits across the north uh, in scotland and below freezing over the highlands we're still seven eight nine degrees in the south but it's co cooling down with that easterly breeze coming in by early hours of wednesday you can see really quite cold and by wednesday afternoon you can see in the far south 11 12 13 degrees across northern england and the midlands three or four degrees with that cold front sweeping through with heavy precipitation every wednesday evening into early hours of thursday widespread frost most areas will be dropping down towards freezing and thursday in the day you can see massive temperature ranges as i said it could be seven eight nine degrees if you're seeing a bit of sunshine and drier weather but where we see more persistent precipitation showers could only be two three four degrees and that is because of evaporative cooling where heavy precipitation falls out of the sky and as it evaporates um, it cools down the air as it uses up excess energy uh, within the atmosphere so this is one of these scenarios where we can have massive temperature differences and within that slither of two or three degrees we could see accumulations of snow but as soon as the precipitation stops um, especially if it's during the day we see a bit of sunshine it will rapidly melt so it's going to be very variable conditions you could wake up to a couple centimeters of snow in the morning and by the afternoon it looks like a beautiful spring day with sunshine and temperatures six seven eight degrees still feeling cold though so it's going to be one of those uh, it's going to be one of those weeks really especially the second half with a lot of variable conditions so possibility some areas only get two or three degrees on thursday other areas seven eight nine degrees and it all all depends where we see those showers and the precipitation line up but again favored along that eastern side of the country real cold six seven eight degrees and you can see once again by early hours of friday it is widely below freezing feeling really quite bitterly cold and again if we have a look at the wind gusts you can see a pretty strong wind gusts uh down the east coast sort of 50 uh, 40 50 miles per hour perhaps when that low pressure system moves through on thursday making it feel even more raw now if we do run on and have a look at the gfs and its precipitation charts as well we'll run through this quite quickly as i don't want this video to drag on too long but you see high pressure retrogresses out into uh, greenland and we start to pull in a bitterly cold northeasterly wind and with that low pressure system dropping away to our southeast bringing in bitterly cold air beyond that high pressure just topple but what that will do is under a cold rare mass it will make things drier but even colder especially overnight with uh with sort of light winds allow those temperatures to really fall and that's where we can see temperatures into uh sort of five minus five minus six degrees even maybe minus 10 degrees in a few spots in sort of scottish highlands beyond that high pressure stays around we continue with some blocking to a north and you can see a really confused picture in the longer term with high pressure still ridging towards the arctic but you can see actually we're on a bit of a milder side of the block now with more southwesterly winds so very very peculiar there so there's still a lot of potential for seeing more cold weather throughout April. But this stage on this latest GFS run, it doesn't fully come off after the next sort of seven days or so. But if we do run through the air masses, you can see bitterly cold air coming in from the northeast. Really quite cold. And as that high pressure topples, as I said, we stay under the colder air mass. But though precipitation does sort of... Uh, sort of uh to just limit itself through saturday and sunday before we do see a bit of milder air pushing through but it'll still be chilly with the air direction coming in from the north northwest and we continue to see cold air, ma air masses really quite close by all the way until the middle of april so it does it like even though we could be seeing a little bit milder conditions through uh, after sort of the next sort of week or so it could be returning colder at times as well with overnight frosts and daytime temperatures a couple degrees still below average and if we have a look at the temperature deviation run it back you can see generally we are in the blues for quite a lot of the next um next sort of week or two uh, and you can see that uh, come the end of this working week first of april eight to ten degrees below average really really quite cold 
If we have a look at the precipitation charts, we'll have a look at these very quickly. They are not the most accurate, being sort of a mid to long range model. They are a little bit overdo it, but they're a little bit over, overdone sometimes. But it's still good to see uh, because it uh, just shows the positioning of the precipitation, not, not, not quite as much the intensity we're looking at here. So you can see real minimal precipitation around at the moment, and then we see snow starting to move in from the northeast through wednesday and that heavier snow drops through and you can see heavy snow potentially through early hours of thursday down the eastern side of the country a bit of rain mixing in as well that is expected there is going to be some rain around cold rain could be some sleet and snow and you can see continuously heavy wintry showers pushing in along the east coast through early hours of friday and that just continues through to saturday before things dry up a little bit before we start to see more precipitation come around in the north and the west but turning more towards rain as we see warmer upper air conditions so snow there on the gfs quite widely through wednesday thursday and friday so as i said at the start of the video all areas really up and down the country could see some falling snow uh, during this working week so make sure you keep an eye out for it shouldn't be disruptive for most people but there is the potential there um, and of course it will feel really quite cold so it'll feel unpleasant out there as well now, if we have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare. High pressure at the top of the UK at the moment. Northeastly winds moving in, really quite cold. And we see that high pressure topple. Stay under that high pressure before we start to pull in more of a westerly flow at day 10. But still under high pressure, so we're still dry. And there will be frosts, especially further southwards. If we do run it back and have a look at the upper air conditions, you can see mild at the moment. But then we see that bitterly cold air running down. Really cold, as I said. And then the high pressure topples under still colder air mass by uh, sort of day seven, day eight. So by next Sunday, Monday time. And then we do start to put in a bit milder air, but still might be a little bit chilly in the south uh, with that under the higher pressure. But, but as I said, um, it's still looking cold. Um, and again, have a look at those temperature deviations. Still seven, eight, nine degrees below average. Really quite cold for maybe some milder air moves in towards sort of the 5th, 6th of April. But as I said... Blocking is still going to be around so we could return colder once again. But one good thing is, as we head towards the middle of April, end of April, that cold air towards the Arctic really does start to run out. So it means any potential of any winteriness really does get cut out over the next few weeks. We've lost sort of potential is sort of the next week or two, really, for anything proper. Um, because beyond that, that air to our north really does start to run out as we do enter into summer in the northern hemisphere. So if we do finally, uh, before we have a look at the Eastern BF, have a look at the GM precipitation charts. This sometimes doesn't uh, does underdo it a little bit, uh, but still does show good uh, positioning of precipitation. You can see by Tuesday evening, we see precip heavy precipitation moving down from the north, and that heavier precipitation is more towards the southwest. So again, interesting that positioning is slightly different. That can make a big, big difference. And as that moves through, we just see a lot of wintry showers in the east through Thursday and Friday. As I said, GM run does sometimes underdo it, so there probably will be more showers than that. For early hours of Saturday, it looks like more widespread showers progressing through. And then by Sunday, things starting to dry out a bit before more of a northwesterly flow comes in. But more high pressure involved with this GM run, so still uh, limited precipitation. If we finish up with the mid-range models, but have a look at the ECM WF. Now you can see high pressure at the top of the UK at the moment, and then we see that bitterly cold northeasterly wind. Really, really cold indeed, and it hangs around. And as I said, with application still in the jet stream, we see potentially another reinforcement of colder air towards the 5th or 6th of April, with another bitterly cold northerly wind. Now if we run it back and have a look at those air masses, you can see bitterly cold air moving in towards 1st of April, 2nd of April, and then we see a brief lull for a day or two, and then we go back into a bitterly cold air mass. But as I said like a few minutes ago, that cold air towards the Arctic really is running out. Um, but it, it, this ECMDF run front is really, really cold. And as I said, if this fell, if this sort of pattern came in uh, January, we'd be in the freezer for a good week or two. It'd be bitterly, bitterly cold. Uh, it's still going to be really cold this week, uh, but it would be sort of like uh, not getting above freezing if this was in January. So if we do run through, you can see really quite cold on the temperature deviations, 4 to 6, 8 degrees, even 10 degrees below average in a few spots, and staying below average for a brief little milder sector before going well below average once again. So really, really quite cold.
So to finish up, have a look at the ensembles. If we start on the GFS ensembles, have a look at the next couple of weeks. You can see mild at the moment, dropping considerably below, below average by sort of Tuesday time. Really quite cold for a good three or four days there. Well below minus five, towards minus ten at times. A good almost 10 degrees below average. We do see a return towards average around the 4th or 5th of April, but still some runs going much colder than average, others going milder, so sort of evening out to around average. And that's something I'm, exp I'm expecting to be a bit up and down. With still some application in the jet stream, we will likely see some more colder northerly uh, flows at times. Precipitation still is quite high. So even though high pressure will be toppling, perhaps it's not going to be in control for too long. If we have a look at the two meter temperatures, you can see still potential for 15, 16 degrees over the next day or two for some. But by mid next week, um, by sort of Wednesday time, 7, 8, 9 degrees. And by Thursday and Friday, real quite cold, only 6 or 7 degrees. And with evaporative cooling, could be much colder than that. And you can see from the operational run, which does have more of that wintriness in the southeast, for London, only 3 or 4 degrees. And towards the evenings, it will be well below freezing. But, of course, the ensemble members do sometimes struggle uh, with that because, of course, that's all down to do with... Um, clear skies and radiation coming off uh, off the surfaces so sometimes struggles with that but it will be below freezing overnight um, before temperatures do slowly recover but we might not be seeing anything above 10 degrees widely until perhaps on the 7th 8th 6th 7th 8th of april uh, so in a sort of week to uh, 10 days time so very cold 7 to 10 days time coming up even though maybe snow risk really is only sort of wednesday to saturday uh i'll be on that it's still going to remain below average very chilly indeed with overnight frost, as I said. If you do look at the new snow depth spikes as well, you can see significant potential here for snow between the 30th to the 2nd of April. Now, remember, this is snow falling out the sky, not expected to all settle. Could be some settling with heavier precipitation falling at night, uh, evaporative cooling, of course. But so falling snow is quite likely for quite a few areas. Further westwards and southwards you are, the less likely it is. But you can't rule it out, of course, with some of these heavier showers moving through. And when we see persistent bands of wintriness or precipitation, at least, there could be some snow mixing in that with that for all areas, really. If we finish up the video by having a look at the ECWF ensembles, have a look at the midnight run. Again, mild at the moment, dropping well below average. It could five to ten degrees below average from around the 31st all the way to around the 4th or 5th of april and you can see some stay well below average including the control run which goes well below average um or sort of up and down but stays well below average for a period of time and you can see the operational run goes up well above average for a day or two before dropping well below average again as that cold and northerly wind comes in so it does look like there will be a return to average from majority of the ensemble members around the 5th of april but there could be another plunge colder again you can see the average of the ensemble members is about a degree below average so still chillier north to northwesterly flow is favoured but it won't be quite uh, as wintry or as cold as we're going to be seeing this upcoming week still unsettled as well with heavier precipitation likely as well so yeah very very interesting next couple of weeks coming proper wintry weather again i must stress it's not going to be a massive sort of beast from the east fest by any means there will be um there will be some snow around there will be falling snow for quite a few significant snow will be very much limited to northern areas over hills and wherever we see the heaviest precipitation line up and it could be some very localized areas and of course any precipitation that does settle will likely melt as soon as the precipitation stops and as soon as we see any sunshine out there so it's not going to be anything crazy but for early april and coming off the back of the last week we've had which has been exceptional it's going to be a real shock and a real um, take back towards um, proper december january weather which we haven't really seen this year so very very interesting seeing this uh fingers crossed it isn't too disruptive for you um but it is going to be very interesting seeing this next week so anyway uh, hope you enjoyed make sure you do stay safe out there in the wintry weather next week it is going to be cold there are going to be some slippery surfaces especially in the morning with frost and ice around so please do take care but i'll see you again for another video soon